Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Auzun bile min şeytanir recim bismillahirrahmanirrahim elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin ve nahmaduhu bihi ve takallu alayh nauzu billahi min şururi anfusina ve min sayyati a'malina man yahdihillahu fela mudillahu ve man yudlil fela hadiyallah Men eşhedü en la ilahe illallah ve eşhedü en şerike neşhedü enne Muhammeden abdur resulullah Sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem ve ala alihi ahlihi ve ashabihi ecmaîn. Kavlu Allah subhanahu ve ta'ala ki kitabı mübin. Ya ayyuladîn amelu takûlu Allah tukatehi ve la tu'mutuna illa antum mislimûn. Ya ayyuladîn nâsû râbukum aladî kalakakum min nâfsîn ve hadedin ve kalakla min hâ zâvca ve thala min humu ricalin kathîrin ve nisâ. وتقول لحلا دي تسألون به والرحم إن الله كان عليكم ركيبا الحمد لله الذي جاء اليوم جماعة سيد العين من عبد ونستأنه إليه وهو لا الفدر صلاة جماعة بكال وتالله يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي إلى صلاة من يوم الجماعة فصلوا إلى حبك وله بذر الربع المؤمنون مكلسين هم الذين آمنوا وتأمنوا كلوبكم ذكر الله بذكر الله تكلوب. من هو كمان الله سبحانه وتعالى سورة الأنفال إنما المؤمنون الذين آمنوا ذكر الله والوجال كلوبكم إذا توليات عليهم آياته ذرات إيمان وإلا وإلا ربهم يتوكلون الذين يكمن الصلاة مما رزقناهم ينفقون أولئك هم المؤمنون الحق لهم درجة عند ربهم مغفرة ورزق كريم كما أخرج ربكم من بياتك بالحق وإن فرق من المؤمنين ولا خيرهم يجادلك في حق بعد من تبعنا تبعنا كن أنما أنما يساكن ولا موت وهم يندرون. The only are they only are believers whose hearts tremble with awe whenever Allah is mentioned, whose belief is strengthened whenever His signs are recited to them, and who put their trust in their Lord. Those who establish the Salah, who spend on the deserving out of them which they have provided, and those who are the ones who are true believers for them are degrees of honor with their Lord and forgiveness and generous provision, just as you were brought forth by your Lord from your homes to fight in the battle of Badr by the truth, even though some of the believers were unwilling to fight, arguing with you about the truth after it had been made clear just as if they were being driven toward death with open eyes. And then, of course, what we read, and we read every week, the sincerest believers are those who have believed and whose hearts find rest in the remembrance of Allah, for truly in the remembrance of Allah, the hearts find their rest. These five qualities described in uh, Surat and Fal of a believer the believers are those who, when their Allah is mentioned, feel a free, a feel fear in their heart, and when His verses are recited unto them, and these verses increase their faith and they put their trust in their Lord. Those who perform the salat, ikamat, uh, ikamat the salat, and spend out of the, the of what we have provided for them. And it is those who are the believers in truth, for them are gardens with dignity of the Lord and forgiveness and generous provisions. And it's clear from these verses that the qualities of a true Muslim, that they have fear in their hearts, that their faith, their, their faith increases when they hear the Quran and ponder over that. They push their trust in Allah, have tawakul. They perform their prayers regularly and they spend in charity, charity in the path of Allah. These are the qualities that Allah tells us are the qualities of a believer. And as a Muslim, one can take heed from these verses and assess 
our own state of our heart. And in his tufts here on this, Ibn Kathir writes that none of Allah's remembrance enters the hearts of the hypocrites upon performing what he has ordained. They neither believe in any of Allah's ayat, nor trust Allah, nor pray, even if they are alone, nor pray the zakat do of their wealth. And I think the primary point here is that a true believer is one when Allah is mentioned and he feels that fear. Fear in the sense of trepidation, anxiety, implements Allah's orders and abstains from what is forbidden. And about these people, Sufi and Al-Thawri, you have the narrated that Asudi commented, a man might be thinking of committing injustice or a sin, but he abstains when he's told, have taqwa of Allah and his heart becomes fearful. And I guess also we can say that for such people, Allah has promised grades of, grades of, of uh, faith and dignity, special places in paradise. We know from different hadith that paradise has many levels, and the more deserving are granted better and higher levels in paradise. In a hadith recorded by Imam Ahmed, the collectors of the Sunan Abatiya and that Ibn uh, Abu Sa'id said that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings upon him, said on these qualities, residents of paradise see the residents of the highest grades, just as you see the distant planet in the horizon of the sky. Truly Abu Bakr and Umar are among them in the highest grades, how excellent they are. And so the hadith also goes on and tells us as well as the Quran, that truthfulness is a quality of a, of a believer, fear of Allah and trusting all things to Allah, cleanliness, paying particular attention to the obligatory acts of worship, guarding of the tongue, and freedom from reliance or assistance on other human beings. And from the Hadith, always submit to what Allah has decreed, be patient in calamities, be grateful for the blessings, be faithful, keep promises, be trustworthy. And as we know, the Sufis are people of the tariqah, of a spiritual path, add that one cannot attain perfection until one exercises humility by eliminating pride and arrogance, frees himself or herself from the influence of the nafs, evil inciting soul. May Allah bless us with all of these traits. It's also go, good to know the qualities of the hypocrites then. Addiction to falsehood and resorting to lies, failure to keep one's word, being false to trust or being untrustworthy. And these are the three major traits of the hypocrite. All of this can be talked about as the mu'min mirat al mu'minin, the um, adab, if you will, of the faithful person. That person sees the behavior and the actions of their companions, or sees in the behavior and the actions of their companions, the reflection of their own feelings and their own deeds. Not just they see in the problems of others their own problems, but by seeing the behavior and actions of their companions, the reflection of their own feelings and deeds, one sees the mirror of their heart and it becomes pure and, a, and one becomes humble. And a great brotherly and sisterly love begins to develop when you, instead of criticizing someone, sees in their frailties or their misdeeds or their weaknesses your own. It builds a very strong relationship. You actually feel that love and that love which develops among one's companions is extended throughout the whole of the human community, the ummah. And you feel that love because you have in that reflection your own feelings and deeds. You see yourself and others and you contemplate the fact that you see yourself and others. And you change that which is within you. You gain love for those brothers and sisters upon whom you are reflected. You gain love for the rest of humanity. And you find that you're more patient, more tolerant, and you find you're more understanding and much more effective as a human being. To do good for one's brothers or sister's sake is to prefer others over yourself. There's a word for that, ithar. 
It is to give up your own prestige for the sake of one's fellow being. You could be sitting in a meeting and get agitated and aggravated by someone's lack of understanding or <coughs> ignorance or just the amount of time they take in explaining something. And you should see that what that reflects in you is your impatience. And should make an affirmation in that sense to serve, be serviceful. That your own dignity, your own prestige rides on your own response. With the frustration when you're teaching school with a child who doesn't get it, or a brother or sister in the kitchen when you're cooking with them, or a brother and sister in the house, for that matter. So if you let your mind dwell on this, take it seriously. Don't think it doesn't fit you. One size fits all. You ever go into the store and you see some of those like Mexican or Indian things that says one size fits all, and you say, how could that fit? Then it all, but it does. Give up your own prestige for the sake of other human beings. It's not just putting yourself second and thinking of others first. It's actually to give up the rewards that would normally come to you to be able to transfer those rewards and benefits to someone else. The Sufi also had to learn how to receive because you had to be cognizant of the effort the giver has gone through to give you whatever they're giving you. A chocolate bar, an opportunity, praise, work, a beautiful gift. It's not just enough to be a giver also, you have to learn how to receive. So what is a mukmin, one who, who is a believer or a faithful person? There's a saying, to make one of the mukmin happy is to make the prophet happy. And among the Sufis, the preparatory steps, real understanding or understanding <coughs> of what is real is service. Even though it's a preparatory step, it remains for the Sufi a duty for the rest of their life. It's always the Sufi's duty to be surfaceful. And even though it's just a preparatory step, it's a very significant one. Without the foundation of that humility, gratitude, and service, there is no walking on the path. It'd be like walking on nails with your bare feet. There's a quotation, whoever excuses himself from the service of his brothers or sisters, Allah will give him a humiliation from which he cannot be rescued. Think about community service. Think about doing nothing as opposed to doing something. Thinking about making up time because you had a class or something else. Whoever excuses himself from the service of his brothers or sisters, Allah will give him a humiliation from which he cannot be rescued. There are very, well you say, well I do service either. What I'm doing is service. It may very well be. It may well be. I'm not gonna judge whether it is or not, unless I see it for myself. But you should. There are very linear, linear ways in which you might say that I would, Say you're going to, you know, you're, to do what you're going to do, but your goal is to be truthful, or your goal is to be honest. Your goal is to be fulfilled if you want it fulfilled. If your goal is whatever the situation may be, however you define it, to resolve conflict, to do some service, to do some good work, to help another individual, it should be done in the name of Allah. In the name of Allah, the one who resolves all problems. In the name of Allah, the one who is the most compassionate and merciful. In the name of Allah, who is the fulfiller of needs. In the name of Allah, who is the healer, the protector, the overseer, the patient, the persevering, the guide, the leader. So I think our goal is to serve Allah. And I think that even if you take the most materialistic person and you say to them, what's your goal in life? They say, well, my goal is to have success. Well, ya fala. But then go back and you think that, well, you can't spend your life walking over people or being 
part of your life walking all over people for selfish ends and expect to be fulfilled at the end of your life. Don't tell me you're not going to be looking over your shoulder if you wind up being walking all over people for your own opportunistic reasons. Because there's some unsureness that, is, that Allah has given us too, especially difficult circumstances, trying circumstances. When you have to make difficult, important decisions, matters of life and death. I think that uncertainty comes at those times because we're not certain about ourselves and we have to make a difficult decision. I think it's difficult to the degree we are uncertain about ourselves and, and or are we in an environment that breeds uncertainty. And sometimes you can make a difficult decision, but you can't follow through with that decision because of circumstances around you. And you then have to address yourself. How am I going to change those circumstances? What am I going to do to make this decision able to be made? And the reason we're unsure is because we don't know the path, or we don't know the way, or we don't have the strength of character, or we're weak. OK, that's fine. But how do I find the strength? How do I find the focus? How do I find the meaning? You remember the story about uh, I, well, I don't know. I'm going to go into that story. It's a long story about uh, the, to the talking dog's head. Uh, do you remember any of you remember that story? Huh? Well, if you remember, tell it to somebody. <laughs> when, the Sufi, when, when, the, when the Sufi went back home and he repented and he was able to take the Hajj, he became a Sufi. Remember that? In other words, what he became aware of was that he had to be truthful in terms of his mystical states. He had to accept the changes that were going on. You can't separate what's going on inside yourself and what's going on outside of yourself. And it's very wrong to think you can. Begin to understand what the beauty of life is. It's not the exceptions. It's not the things that you just get away with that nobody seems to see. It's not eating the banana where nobody can see it story. The exceptions are themselves necessities. So there are some exceptions in life. For instance, there are and have been Sufis who are traditionally like uh, yogis who removed themselves from society, lived in caves, totally removed. But that's the exception. Most of us live within the world, and we have to have the adab of a person who lives inside this world. In the and we have to be able to receive the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the midst of our day-to-day -day life and trials and vicissitudes. We have to be able to see that all Sufis, all people who are really mukmin, all the thousands and thousands of people who are in Tariqa, hundreds of thousands of people are in Tariqa, each one has their own separate journey. But each one has to learn the essential truth of gratitude and humility, service, find harmony. You find the harmony described in the Torah, and the lion shall lie down with the lamb, and the children shall lead them in, in Isaiah. The possibility for harmony, for balance, constantly telling us about a world that we can share with one another, the nature that we can share with one another, the love of animals, of curiosity, of wanting to speak to those animals. I, you know, I drive out of here often at night and the deer are on the four acres and I always stop and I roll down the window and I have a little talk with them. I ask them how they are and what's happening and are they having a good dinner and you know, they look at me like that and then they decide who's that crazy person and they run away. Why is he talking to us? Because I'm searching for harmony. I'm trying to communicate with them. They're part of my community. They live in my community, and I live in their community. And I want something to resonate with them. The Sufi sees the whole world as their community and work on that model. Because the world itself doesn't see the world as a community. A community. Why? Uh, that doesn't make any difference. 
Allah designed the ear of the donkey and the pistol of the flower. And he thought, perhaps, in it, well, however Allah thinks, if you want to think, make that kind of a, if I want to make that kind of a metaphor, what a wonderful flower, you know? He makes this thing called lamb's ear plant, right? You know that one? And he thinks, gee, this is a really nice flower. When I make animals, the next time I make an animal, I think I'm going to make an animal with an ear like this. And he remembers and he says, ah, oh, now I'm going to make something called a lamb. I'm going to, ah, oh, that's that lamb's ear herb I made. I'm going to make, a, make that into an ear for a lamb. I'm sure that's what happens. <laughs> That's how it works. Wouldn't that flower make a wonderful animal? Right? Or like the flower that eats the fly. What's it called? The fly? Venus flytrap. Fly catcher, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. good. So I'm going to make a flower and then say, oh, it'd be good for eating flies. Take that, I better make flies for it then. You know how you make a t parrot talk? You say something over and over and over again, right? No. You hold a mirror to their face and say the word over and over again. That's the best way to teach a parrot how to talk. Hold a mirror to their face and then you say the word over and over again. And then they think they're another parrot saying it. Well, that's the philosophy of the sheikh. Sheikh stands in front of you talking over and over and over again until you start to think that you're the sheikh, huh? right? Well, I guess the metaphor falls apart there. But the teacher is like a mirror. Adab in terms of the marine, adab in terms of the mushes, adab in terms of the good human being, good correct behavior. We have it because it establishes a bond, establishes a tie between the teacher and the student, tawuju, between the Shaykh and Rasul, between you and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And we should be positive. And we should equate affirming our strength with being positive. And so I want to equate for a moment being positive with accepting our weaknesses. Because it gives you a realistic place to begin with. And because it allows for the most basic law of creation to operate. For example, a baby accepts its weaknesses and as a result, Allah provides many servants to the baby. Right? Certainly because of our work with people who are in need, disabled, handicapped, or, in, or illiterate, or others, or, or in need of public health, or whatever that we do all over the world, we also try to find from among those people the strong ones. So from the community of young girls in Egypt, Mary Samra finds the strong ones. From the community in the reef of the, of the children in the village, Muhammad Ari finds the strong ones to teach. And in the Ukraine, they find the head of the department of, of special uh, handicapped people, or whatever they called in, in Ukraine, I forget if there's still a Ukraine tomorrow. Andre. He himself is disabled. It's from among our own disabilities we find our strength. And so if you don't embrace what's disabling you, you're, Allah's not going to provide for you the strength to overcome it. I don't mean accept the disability as a permanent disability, a sickness as a permanent sickness. I mean to be able to say from among our own selves we can raise ourselves up from within our own self form our own strength. Yet you accept your illness, and they accept with hope the possibility of its cure. You affirm your own strength. Yes, of course, Allah provides for you in those times someone to, be, to help you, to be dependent on. Not codependent in the psychological sense. Maybe codependent in the spiritual sense. I use it differently, as you know. Nuruddin uses it one way, in a, and I use it in another way. Allah provides. Yeah. How many times? You can't cook, someone brings you the meal. 
If you can't go and get your medicine, someone goes to the pharmacy for the medicine. If you don't, can't, can't take care of yourself, Allah provides for you the proper doctor if you take the proper attitude. And if you're weak, Allah gives you strength, but tells you all along, you must find your own strength too. You have to be positive. Positive, positive, positive. Maybe accept its weaknesses because it can't walk, it can't feed itself, it can't change its own diaper, too bad. <laughs> but as it becomes aware of its own strength, it's the first one to grab that strength, right? As a first one, it doesn't be, it, it tries to speak, it tries to crawl, it tries to turn over, it tries to crawl, it tries to, it tries to stand up, it tries to walk immediately. Then say, well, I'm starting to walk. I think I'll wait till Monday to finish this. And as you get older, you learn maybe if you're, if you're destined to learn it, if you're intelligent, if you're sincere, if you really look at life, if you really learn about yourself, if you really have a good view of yourself, and it's not aberrated, you will find what is right and what is wrong about your own personality and you will jump to correct it. You not hold on to it. You not hold on to your sicknesses or your fears or your worries. You don't get more blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you hold on to your fears and your worries and your illnesses. He's a partner because he is compassion and mercy and healing and tolerance and patience and understanding. He is not a person. So the, those qualities flow to you when you open the door to them. So you can't let your fear or your resentment or your jealousy or your self-doubt or your anger cast a shadow over your heart and making you imp imp impotent and unable to act and unable to appreciate the beauty and the culture and the love and the service and the kindness and the generosity and the opportunity and the sweetness of life. No Sufi need fear any companion that's a true companion. You look for the good. And I know you can say, and other people, you know, uh, question it, but I know you can say that I am guided and that my guide is guided and my guide's guide has been guided and I, we are well guided. Don't feel threatened. See for yourself the beauty in each other. Look for something and see if it's truly a threat. If it is, then turn away from it. In a hadith of the Prophet he said, great happiness is waiting for the person who is occupied with their own faults and who is not looking at the faults of others. And Mevlana Jalaluddin Rumi said, the minute I'm disappointed, I feel encouraged. When I'm ruined, I am healed. Salam alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma ansana finaka khairu nasirin, watar finaka khairu fatihin, wakfirlana finaka khairu kafirin, warhamna finaka khairu rahimin, warzukna finaka khairu razakin, Wahadana Najana Minaf Dalameen Wahablana Riyanta Abatin Kamahiya Fi Ilmika Wanshuna Lena Makazani Rahmatik Wahamil Biha Hamla Karamati Ma Salamati Ma Afiati Fidini Wudunya Akhra in a Kala Kulisha Kadir. Alumi Yasilana Umrana Maharati La Kulu Kabalubana Bi Abadana Wa Salamati Afiati Fidunina Wudinina. On the Salaka Iman Diamond, with the Salaka Kaban Kashim, on the Salaka Ilman Nafim, on the Salaka Din and Kayaman, on the Salaka Afiata Minkuli Balaya, the Salaka Tamma Afiat, with the Salaka Dama Afia, with the Salaka Al Shukra Al Afia, in that Kalakuli Shankadir. 
اللهم واسفر وجودنا بنور صفاتك وارضك ربي بشرنا يوم القيامة بعينا ولك وجعل يدك مبسوطا لنا وعلى أهلنا ومن معنا برحمتك وكن لنا صاحبا في سفرنا وكلفة في أهلنا ومن على وجود أيدنا وسكوم على ما كناتهم فلا يستي أن مودي لا ماجي لنا يعني ما الله مجيب يعني ما الله مجيب يعني ما الله مجيب Take a moment and ask for Allah for the adab of a believer and the ability to serve others well. Alhamdulillah, in the matter of the Son 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 اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد اللهم وارد رسالتنا كلاف الرشدين أبي بخر الصديق عمر الفاروق وعثمان الرائن وسيدنا إمام علي كرم الله وأجا وارد رسالهما سيدنا حسن وسيدنا حسين وأمهما سيارة فاطمة زهرة وأن على بيت كرام وأجواج النبي تكتهرات أمات المؤمنين وسابات صالحين وتابين تابيهم و بعد الله مكلسين بأحسن مين إيمانين إخسانين يوم الدين إبدا الله إن الله يأمر و بعد الإخساني و أتينا بذكر بينها و نفشى مكرر و باقي يا لكم لا لكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله يكبر أكمل سلاطين شو